Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. First, have you downloaded your free copy of our children's illustrated biography of African legends yet? Please do so if you haven't. Don't forget that we owe our children a responsibility to expose them to our history. Also, please help us to continue bringing you videos like this one by supporting us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Please subscribe, share and like our videos. Our legend today is Patrice Lumumba. Patrice Lumba was born on the 2nd of July, 1925. His father, Francois Tolenga Otetshima, was a farmer in Onalua in the Kataka Kombe region of the Kasai province of the Belgian Congo. The country was known at the time as the Belgian Congo. And his mother was Julian Wamato Lumeja. He was a member of the Tetela ethnic group and had three brothers and one half-brother. He was educated at a Protestant primary school and a Catholic missionary school and finally the government post office training school where he passed with distinction. Lumumba spoke Tetela, French, Lingala, Swahili, and Shiluba. He was a member of the small Batetela ethnic group. And the fact that he came from a small ethnic group played a significant role in his later political life because his two principal uh, political rivals, Moise Shombe, who led the bre breakaway uh, 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 party of the Katanga province and Joseph Kasavumbu who later became the president of Congo both came from large ethnic groups very large and powerful ethnic groups from which they then derived their major support giving their political movements a regional character in contrast, Lumumba's movement emphasized a more national, all Congolese outlook. Lumumba took an interest in the Enlightenment ideals, uh, and wrote poetry, and many of his works had an anti-imperialist theme. By the early 1950s, Lumumba was one of the young leaders across Africa who were committed to working for national goals and independence from the colonial powers. In 1955, he became regional head of the circles of the Stan uh, Stanleyville and joined the Liberal Party, where he edited and distributed many lit uh, party literature. His activities led to him being targeted by Belgium and he was arrested on spurious charges of embezzlement, convicted and sentenced to 12 months imprisonment and a fine. This was, of course, only the beginning of his many collisions with the Belgian authorities. After his release, Lumumba helped found the Movement National Congolese MNC uh, party on uh, the 5th of October 1958 and quickly became the organization's leader. Unlike other political organizations in the Congo at the time, the MNC did not exploit ethnic sentiments but rather promoted a platform that included independence, gradual African Africanization of the government, um, state-led economic development, and neutrality in foreign affairs. Those were very far-reaching, far-sighted ideas. Lumumba had a large popular following due to his personal charisma, excellent oratory, and ideological sophistication. 
His popularity gave him more political autonomy than his political opponents who were more dependent on Belgian connections. Lumumba was one of the delegates who represented the MNC at the All-African People's Conference in Accra, Ghana in December of 1958. At this international conference, which was hosted by Ghanaian President uh, Kwame Nkrumah, Lumumba further solidified his Pan-Africanist beliefs. Nkrumah was personally impressed by Lumumba's intelligence and ability. In October 1959, Lumumba, as leader of the MNC, was arrested for inciting an anti-colonial riot in Stanleyville. 30 people were killed during that uh, uh, riot. He was sentenced to six months in prison. The start date of the trial was deliberately set on the 18th of January, 1960. And this was in order to derail him because it was the, that was the same date that the Congolese Roundtable Conference in uh, Brussels was supposed to start and it was such an important conference because it was where uh, the plan for the uh, future of uh, of the congo was supposed to be agreed upon now despite lumumba's imprisonment the mnc won a convincing majority in the local elections in the congo as a result of the strong pressure from delegates who were upset by Lumumba's trial, he was released and allowed to attend the Brussels conference where a declaration of Congolese independence was set for the 30th of June 1960, following national elections which were also to be held in 1960. The Movement National Congolese or MNC won the election. Although there was a multiplicity of parties, the MNC won by a landslide and Lumumba emerged as the leading nationalist politician of the Congo. Belgium was not happy that he won, but their maneuvers to prevent his assumption of authority failed and he was therefore asked to form the first government which he did on June 24, 1960. Unfortunately, he was assassinated less than seven months after his country's independence. So just what role did the US and Belgium play in his assassination and the mess that the Congo is still in today? In order to examine their rules, we need to look at history. For 126 years, the US and Belgium have been the masterminds in shaping Congo's destiny. In April 1884, seven months before the Berlin Conference and the shameful scramble for Africa, the U.S. became the first country in the world to recognize the claims of King Leopold II of Belgium and to run the Congo as a private property. Shameful. However, when there was an outcry against Leopold's brutal economic exploitation, which resulted in millions of fatalities in the Congo, the U.S. changed its tunes and joined other world powers to force Belgium to take over the country from Leopold and run it as a regular colony. I mean, almost like from Pripan to Fire. It was during this colonial period that the U.S. acquired a strategic stake in the enormous natural wealth of the Congo. To illustrate, the U.S. actually got the uranium used to make the atomic bomb that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki from mines, from Congolese mines. Now, with the outbreak 
of uh, the Cold War, the U.S. and its Western allies were even more determined to stop Africans from having control over strategic raw materials because they were afraid that the Soviet Union would succeed in wooing Africans into their camp. Pretty much the kind of scenario we're seeing being played out between the U.S., uh, China, and Russia today. Now, that was why Patrice Lumumba's determination to achieve genuine independence and to have full control over Congo's resources in order to utilize them to improve the living conditions of his people was seen as a threat to Western interest. They were not going to allow him, you know, to do the right thing by his people and his country. Now, in order to destroy him for daring to have the interest of his country at heart, the U.S. and Belgium used all the resources at their disposal, including the United Nations Secretariat under Doug Hammarskjöld and Ralph Bunch, to buy the support of Lumumba's Congolese rivals and hired killers. Lumumba's assassination was executed less than seven months after his country's independence. On January 17, 1961, Lumumba and two associates, John Okito and Maurice Mpolo, were flown to Elizabethville, now Lumumbashi, where they were delivered to the secessionist regime and their Belgium advisors in Katanga. They were beaten before they were executed by a firing squad under Belgian command. Although their bodies were initially thrown into shallow graves, they were later dug up under the direction of Belgian officers, hacked into pieces and dissolved in acid or burned by fire. It, it, it was just a gruesome way, you know, to, to destroy any human being. His assassination became a stumbling block to the ideals of national unity, economic independence, and pan-African solidarity that Lumumba had championed, as well as a shattering blow to the hopes of millions of Congolese for freedom and material prosperity. The country has never known peace or prosperity since his death, yet it is widely considered to be the richest country in the world regarding natural resources. Thanks for watching. Please download your free copy of our children's books and support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Also, tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.